Okay, thanks for joining the deep dive today on batch transaction entry. Uh, my name is Robin. I'm the um, product manager here at Donify, and we're going to look at what batch transaction entry is, what it means, and that kind of thing. But just by way of a um, quick agenda item, um, we will cover um, what batch transaction entry is and why it exists in the product in the first place. We'll look at how it works, which is the bulk of the session. And then we'll look at a sort of checklist of things you need to do to get started if you want to start using it. Um, now, it may be that you're watching this or listening to this um, from the point of view of not knowing what batch entry is and, um, you know, right at the beginning of the learning curve and even why it might be a good idea to use it. On the other hand, you might be listening to this or watching this from the basis of having used Donify for some time, using batch entry and want to find out some of the sort of deeper corners of it. and. Uh, what they actually mean. So I'm um, hoping we're going to uh, touch all of that for everybody, but um, you know, bear with us if there's anything you already know, and uh, we'll get on to some interesting stuff as, the, as we go through it. There are some resources that you can take advantage of. Um, this webinar um, recording is on the Donify Chat Facebook group, and will be when it's finished, and also on the Donify YouTube channel. Um, there are, of course, knowledge base articles at support.donify.com. So the full textbook about how this works um, is there. And in this case, batch transaction entry, those articles are, are, are not that tedious. <laughs> they're actually quite, um, you know, not many of them, and they're quite succinct and, and to the point. So uh, there's, there's, there's um, quite a bit of learning to be had there if you want it. So uh, we'll get on to what it actually is and why does it exist. So batch transaction entry really is um, one of those features in software like Donify, you know, CRM systems for charities, that um, has been around for a long time because of the way that people fundraise and the way that people receive responses to their fundraising. So traditionally, um, I'm talking sort of throughout my career, which goes back a few years now, um, in charities, uh, people have run appeals, direct mail appeals often, or maybe put coupons into uh, magazines or inserts into magazines, that kind of thing. And the response mechanism would be for the donor to look at that, respond to it by getting their checkbook out, writing a check, and sending the check um, back to the charity. So at busy times, like a Christmas appeal or um, a particular you know, emergency appeal, um, or even throughout the year, if you're a, a charity with a significant um, um, awareness, as it were, in, in the marketplace, you'll be receiving lots of um, manual payments, so checks, cash, through the post, and need a way to, to deal with them. And the, the sector has had a word for that, banking and thanking, you know, to be able to basically receive back the mail that people send you, um, enter it into your system, thank people for it, and put it in the bank. So that's what um, Donify here is responding to with this feature called Batch Transaction Entry, which we will now call BTE to save time. So BTE is a way in Donify of manually entering um, large volumes of data. So the goal, if you like, is if I just click back onto my other tab here, you see on the screen share, just go into my other tab, which is showing Donify. We're looking at a constituent, Holly Jones. You can see her timeline transaction on there, as well as the mailing that went out and various other things she's done in the past. Um, the transaction is, is the, if you like, the, um, the purpose of batch transaction entry. It's to get um, entries into the database quickly and without error. So batch transaction entry was developed as a way of helping prevent keying errors making it quick to enter lots of things compared to the one at a time entry method of entering transactions, because obviously you can, as you probably know, click on the timeline and just add a transaction to someone's record one at a time without doing it in batch. And it improves the auditability, which for anyone of an accounting persuasion um, will, will find useful because it means that you can say, right, this batch was worth a certain amount of money and if there's an error somewhere in the difference in the banking and the batch, then you'll realize there was an entry, um, entry problem somewhere along the line. So batch entry helps eliminate um, problems to do with lack of auditability that you might get with single entry. 
So, Donify has this concept of batches, which we will dive into in a bit um, as we go along. But you basically enter batches of checks into Donify, and to create a batch in Donify, you can create them in, in one of a couple of ways. Either manually, which means that you sit in front of the computer with your keyboard and your mouse and you say, right, I'm about to enter a batch of 30 checks from the Christmas appeal, and here we go. You're setting up a batch manually to do that. But there's also a feature in Donify called EFT, which we'll again explain a bit further down the track today, electronic fund transfer, which is all about um, processing expected payments from recurring payment instructions in Donify. For example, standing orders. So EFT, as a feature in Donify, will also create batches for you automatically, which you can then um, mark as paid or partly paid according to what actually came into the bank. So two, two main kinds of batches there, if you like. There are the manually created batches and the EFT batches. Common to all batches is that when you enter a batch of something into Donify, a batch of checks or standing orders received or whatever it may be, they're kind of held in suspense in these batches and you need to post them within Donify to make that information visible then on people's timelines. So go back to Holly Jones, the, um, the, uh, the donor here. Um, the transactions here may have been entered in batches, but they wouldn't have been visible on her timeline until the batches were posted. And in fact, if Holly Jones was a brand new donor, she would be held in that batch as a new donor until the batch is posted, then her constituent record would be created when the batch is posted, along with her transaction. So that's what posting means. BTE is included in the professional edition of Donify. So if you're on this call and you're using Essentials, I'm afraid batch transaction entry is not available to you. Um, but if it's something that is um, of value to you, then I think you'll find it worthwhile moving to professional to get that. Um, and within the professional edition, you can make it available or not to people with rights to financial processing. So if you've got financial processing rights, then you can do batch entry. If you haven't, you can't. So there's some security over that as well. Okay, so in terms, in, not in Donify terms necessarily, but in terms of handling um, inbound items through the post or through the front door of your charity, what do we mean by a batch? Well, some organizations, depending upon their processes, just um, do a numerical batch. So 10 items or 50 items, whatever it may be, represents a batch. So you might get a mail bag one day with 300 you know, items in it, and they are split up perhaps into 50s to represent a batch. Um, batch a batch may also just be a day's post. If you're an organization where you get five checks one day through the post and 28 the next day, your batch sizes will differ, but a day is a batch, which is fine. It can be a mixed batch. So it might be within the batch, you have a range of payment methods. So you might have check and cash within the same batch. You might have a range of campaigns. You might have a batch which is mostly Christmas campaign, but a few what you might call white mail, you know, campaigns that you don't know what they actually are. Um, people have just written in and given you money, not necessarily in response to a campaign. So your batches could be mixed. You could have mixed entries within the batch, and therefore you would sort of have to customize each line when you enter it in the batch to which campaign it was, or you can batch them out according to having a sort of a, a purer batch of just this campaign and just this payment method. So the choice is yours on, on process. And that's quite a big question. Um, what is your process? Because batch entry, batch transaction entry in Donify sits in the middle of your process as the, if you like, the computer system that helps you record your stuff. But your process is more of an all-round business process. So, you know, how do we open the post? What safeguards do we have in place for, you know, making sure that there's perhaps two people opening the post, that kind of thing? Um, for security, and then you've got um, you know, how you then separate that money into maybe batch types, so all of your Christmas appeal in one pile, all of your checks in, in a pile, whatever it's going to be, and then how you might split that down into discrete batches, you know, numerical batches within those types. So this is just a, a suggestion, 
And then for each of those batches of, say, 20, you're going to count them and sum them uh, within that batch to know how much it, that batch is worth. Create and enter the batch headers in Donify, enter them, post them, thank them, and bank the money at the end of the day. So there's a, a business process for you to think through um, as well. And uh, our partners can help you go through that as, as part of your um, adoption of batch transaction entry. So when it comes to the software, and I'll just click over here in my Donify to get things ready. Um, just want to go through a couple of key concepts with you. Um, batches in Donify all have this notion of a header. So a batch header is something that says the date of this batch is the 5th of September. The description is um, my summer appeal checks. Um, my control totals for that batch are I've got 20 checks and the value of them is £512.50. So that, if you like, is the information about the batch as a whole. And it might also include things like what my defaults are for every line that you're going to enter into, into this batch. So the default will be which campaign it is, what payment method it is, which department, which fund it's going to, all of those things that you'd otherwise have to sort of choose each time you enter a transaction. So all batches have a header, and all batches have multiple detail lines. Now, so far, we've been talking about batches in the context of entering money into Donify, transactions as we call them, but you also have the ability within Donify to enter batches that include activities and gift aid declarations, as well as constituents. And we'll get on to the, how you do that in a moment, because it isn't just money that we're talking about now, it's batches of data that you can enter into Donify. So it's not only transactions. Okay, so within Donify, essentially there are three kinds of batches. There are batches that you can enter without using a batch template. And there are batches that you can enter using a batch template. And there are those batches that we mentioned earlier created by EFT, which are a kind of special kind of batch that sit on their own. So batch templates is the, the new concept that we've just introduced there. And we'll look at what that is in just a moment. But we'll start simply by looking at a basic financial transactions batch without using a batch template. So entering a batch without using a template basically lets you find or add constituents as you enter your batch. So let's imagine you've got your 20 checks in front of you. Some of them will be from people you know already. Some of them may be from people you didn't know because they've responded to an insert in a magazine or, or something of that kind. So you'll want to enter within the batch a new constituent if that constituent doesn't exist. You'll also want to add a financial transaction because that's the purpose of these batches um, in this case. So you want to add their donation. And you might want to add a gift aid declaration as well if they've ticked that box. Just bear with me one moment. OK, so let's look at how we enter a batch without using a batch template. And it all starts on the left-hand side of Donify. If you have access to the financial menu, you can open it up. You can click on Batch Transactions. You get the Batch Transactions shown to its right. And you then click the Add Batch button. So that then takes you through to setting up your batch header. Remember, there's the, the header for every batch, which represents what the batch is all about. And um, then there are the detail lines after that. So here's an example of a batch header without using a batch template, which simply means we haven't chosen in the drop down list here a template that we want to use for batch entry. We give it a, a name. So this name is auto generated, new batch, today's date. And then you can change that or add bits after it if you want to give a. Um, Bit more context to it, the date, and then the number of transactions and the total amount. So number of number and value of transactions is a mechanism um, for checking that the amount that you've entered is the amount that you thought it should be. So remember I said earlier on you're opening your post and you're grouping up your checks or into 20s or 50s, whatever it's going to be. 
um, you'll get your calculator out at that point, add up those checks and say, right, it's £251, well, £250 in this case. Um, and that's what we're telling Donify should be in that batch once we've entered all the detail lines. And then Donify will check what you've entered versus what you said you were going to enter um, at the top here and give you a heads up if that doesn't match before you actually post it into the database. Uh, that's just a safeguard. Again, the kind of thing that um, you know, financial and accounting people like to see because it gives you that kind of check, a control total, if you like, that you are entering the right, you have entered the right amount, or that you maybe got your sums wrong when you um, added them up in the first place. So having entered everything in the batch header, um, including all of these defaults, so these, these boxes down here are saying every detail entry in this batch is going to be for the January mailing 2019, there's going to be checks, there's going to be donation as the product and what have you, general fund in Donify. These are the defaults for every entry in the batch. You then have to click Save Changes and it then reverts back to a list of them. You open that batch and then you start entering the detail lines. So what we'll do is I'll just go across to my um, Donify here and we'll add a new batch. So we'll not select a template. Our new batch description is deep dive, and we'll say we've got 20 checks in the post for £512.50, and they are all for a particular, mostly for a particular campaign, spring mailing 2019. They're all checks. They're all going to be donations to the general fund. Um, and I can choose as well here, if I wish, my default thank you letter or thank you document from Donify. So there's a, probably a whole other deep dive about acknowledgements and thanking, but essentially we're, we're pre-selecting the letter that they're going to get. And the declaration method here is the gift aid declaration method. So if there's a new gift aid declaration, we'll, we'll assume they're going to be written, which means they don't need confirmation, and therefore these entries where where they have a gift aid will be eligible for gift aid immediately. So I'm saving changes. It's going to show it at the top of the list. I'm going to click on it, and we're now into entering our batch, um, our batch detail lines under that header that I've just created. So it helpfully starts with giving you the search for the constituent. So let's say the first check in the pile I've got here is for that lady Holly Jones. There she is. So I don't need to add a new constituent at this point. Um, and I'm going to say the date paid, it might be different to today. I'll change that if I want. She sent us a check in for £15. And I can send enter a reference in there, it might be her check number or whatever. Um, and let's create a gift day declaration. Save changes. And that's now held in the batch at the bottom here, and I can keep adding. So it kind of loops around until you're on your last check, in which case you're going to you know, be either posting your batch at that point or closing it and just saving it and posting it at the end of the day. Okay, um, so entering your batch like that until posting, let's go back to the slides just to make sure that we are um, in the right place. So enter the transaction details as we've just done, and off you go. Now, two points to make here. The whole thing can be keyboard driven, so this doesn't have to be a sort of a mouse keyboard, mouse keyboard type of switch all the time. You can just use the keyboard, so you can see some hints down the bottom there. Alt and S is save changes, Alt X is cancel. And the other thing you can see at the top of the screen here is show details. Um, show details is a way for you to open up this particular detail line, this particular check that you're entering, and modify some of those defaults for the batch. So if I click on the next page, it'll show what happens when you've opened them. So we've clicked on Show Details, and yes, we've got the check amount in there, £10. We've got the reference still in the middle there. But it's opened up the rest of it um, that we can change the campaign. So if it was a if we've got one check in the middle of our batch, which wasn't for the spring mailing 2019, we can change it like we have here to newsletter, 
2019. And that one detail line within that batch will be a, a, attributed to that campaign instead. You'll also notice at the top of the screen, I'll just go back to real live Donify. Um, at the top of the screen here, you can see uh, you have this um, control total display. So it's showing that the, the count, we've entered one check out of 20 in our batch, 15 pounds out of 512 pound 50. And that's the thing that will give you a um, uh, sort of a heads up if you try to post it and those, those don't match at the end of the batch. They will look slightly different if you're running an EFT batch um, because they're a different kind of thing, but we'll come on to that in a moment. One other feature you'll see in your batch when you have it open is a manage menu. So that's context sensitive. So the manage menu in this case will show you some options that you can do while the batch is open. So you can either post the batch, which does make it live then, you can edit the batch header. So if you decided that your defaults are wrong, you can change them. And maybe if your control totals were wrong, you can change them as well. And you can delete the batch if it's all a big mistake. So you can do any of those things up until the point that the batch has been posted, in which case there would be no um, manage menu. So let's just pop back into Donify to look at that. We can see our manage menu here. I can edit my batch header, change those defaults, and by changing those defaults, it won't actually historically go through all of the detail lines and change those to that default. Um, that would have to be done on a one by one basis. OK, so that's the manage menu. That's entering a batch without using a batch template. And of course, the final step posting will mean that the, um, the batch that we have created I'll post it now, in fact. So Holly Jones paid us £15, didn't she? Um, we'll go to the Manage menu, post the batch. Here's the heads up that the batch doesn't balance, doesn't um, equal the amount we said it would be. But we'll post it anyway. That's gone through. And in a few moments, and it does kind of disappear around the back, um, back end of Donify into a queuing system so that it gets processed in turn. Um, but before long, we'll find that Holly here has an extra 15 pounds on her timeline. Uh, here she is, 15 pounds from the spring mailing today. And well, that's her gift aid declaration. That's the, the transaction. So two things on the timeline from in her particular case. Okay, so that's a simple batch. Let's move on now to using um, templates. So let's just say what a template's for to start with. A batch template allows you to design the batch entry form that will be displayed when entering batch details. So if you remember, back on our um, basic non-template batch, when you enter transactions into a batch, um, let's open one that's already open here, you've got a, a fairly... Um, it's a fixed form with the ability to, oh no, that's actually a um, bad example. Let me find another one. Here we go. And that's a bad example as well. One more. Here we go. So, the non-template batch detail entry form is fixed. This is what it looks like, and you have that extra show details bit we mentioned earlier, but there's not a lot you can do with that. And if you wanted to, if you say, right, we don't need to enter the reference every time, um, we want it to enter it once at the top of the batch and have it defaulted, you can't do that without a template. So let's look at what a template does for you. It lets you design your form um, when entering batch details. So you can have many templates, uh, for different kinds of batches that you're going to enter. Template-based batches differ from ordinary batches in that you can also have up to three allocations in the transaction. So if you remember, Donify has the ability for you to have a trans, you know, to, to specify or to, to enter donations, transactions, um, with a, a kind of a split 
capability where you might say, right, some of it's for this fund, some of it's for that fund. You can now do that in batches if you're using batch templates. You can also fix or allow changes to the things in the header. So if you've chosen a campaign and you want to make sure that the operator, the person who's entering all of these um, all of these entries for you, make sure they don't have the opportunity to change the campaign on the way through, you can fix that in your template. You can also repeat the same reference. So where your reference is like a paying in reference, um, for example, in your batch, you can set that at the header level using a, uh, a template based batch and have that repeat throughout each one. And you can also connect transactions. There's a feature in Donify to connect a transaction not, um, to, to a third party constituent so that they can, um, you know, for example, a tribute fund could be that constituent, which you can now do, you can do in template based batches. And you can also add activities in batches. So it may be that your batch entry is for an event. You've got people sending you checks for an event and you, you want Donify to end up with two entries. You want a transaction and you want an activity in there to say they've booked into this event, all pointing back at the same campaign representing that event. Um, in the case of um, in-memory fundraising, for example, hospices and, and, and other organizations that you might want to, to have tribute messages, and that, that would be a, a use of an activity. So you could create batches that purely record activities without money um, or a combination of money and activities. So you can have any number of templates, and here is where you manage your templates. So you can add a new template here in Donify or pick one out of the list and modify it. So what I'm going to do is go back into my batch transactions, go to batch templates, which is the next tab, and add one or pick one out of the list here. Let's pick my Christmas appeal kind of template. And my Christmas appeal batch template is saying that whenever I want to enter batch batches of um, money from the Christmas appeal, I'll pick this template, which lets me enter a payment and an allocation. So hopefully you can see on the screen there that that's switched on. So for batches of this kind, we're going to be prompting for some of these things. So um, campaign code, for example, and whether or not you can change it. So I'm going to say Christmas mailing 2019, but we won't let it be changed. Payment method, defaulting to check and cash, but I'll say um, it can be changed. It may be that we've got a I don't know, a calf voucher or something in our batch there that I want to enter. Um, but most of them are, are checks and cash. And what our references, our paying in reference for this batch is going to be reference one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's the um the template definition for the money part of batches of this kind. Whether or not you want to prompt for a second or third allocation, remember those split gifts. So that might come in useful when you're entering a an event fee, someone sent you £15 for an event fee, um, but actually it's only £10 plus £5 donation, so you can actually open up a second allocation if you want to. And whether or not gift aid declarations are allowed, and if so, how they're coded by default, and then whether activities are going to be entered, the first activity and the second activity. So that's the definition of the batch. Sorry, the batch template. So when it comes then to just uh, that screenshot on the on the presentation slides. When it comes then to entering a batch using a batch template, we go in the same place, create a new batch, but this time use the drop-down list to choose the, the batch type, the template we're going to be using. So let's go into that live. The batches, go to add a batch, choose a template, Christmas appeal, check batch, new batch. Christmas 2019 checks RF, it's just my initials. And there are 20 transactions in there. £714 is what I added them up to be beforehand. Save the changes. Shows that batch at the top of my list. I can now open that batch. And the data entry screen is now customized according to the template that I've chosen. So again, yeah, it does start off with a constituent. That's the first thing. So we'll say Holly Jones. There she is. Donation, 10 pounds. Um, 
Acknowledgement text is one of the fields we said we want to appear on there. So happy Christmas to you too, because she wished us a happy Christmas in her letter, and that will appear somewhere in her acknowledgement text. Um, this is if I want to use that connection feature that was switched on for this particular template type. Uh, so choosing a tribute fund or what have you. And then if I want to add an activity, it knows the activity type is tribute. So I'm adding an activity called tribute, which is in loving memory. I'm kind of mixing my batch type here with Christmas and a in memoriam kind of giving, but you get the idea. Save the changes. It's created that line in the batch. I can display you know, other columns in there. So it's a bit more meaningful than just the columns I'm displaying. But in the end, you're going to build up your number of detail lines. And each detail line, if you like, represents potentially a transaction with one, two, or three allocations, a gift day declaration, and up to two activities. Giving us the total count in the same way, and we can post in the same way at the end of it as well. In this case, we're going to post, and she's going to get an activity as well as that transaction that we entered at the top. We'll go and check her record. It's finished its work. Let's have a quick look. Um, not yet. So I'll come back to that one a bit later when it's finished processing. Okay, so that's the um, the way to enter um, information into a batch using a batch template. The defaults do still apply to your hidden hidden fields. So um, different example here, one with multiple activities. Um, so entering, if you like, Christmas concert registration and coffee morning registration as well via a batch. Okay, so the last kind of batch of the three is batches created by EFT. So if you remember, mentioned earlier, EFT is the thing that um, helps you manage expected recurring income, electronic fund transfer, such as standing orders. And you can go into the EFT functions of Donify, which is a different session in itself. And you can create your EFT batch. So your EFT batch is all standing orders this month, for example, that we're waiting for. And it will create a batch that you can open up in batch transaction entry, the same place we've been looking at. But the batches look a bit different. So, a um, couple of characteristics about EFT batches is they can only create transactions based upon RPIs. So, um, if, you're, if you have your recurring payment instructions for standing orders, perhaps on all your donors, um, it will create transactions based on those, but you can't add transactions to them within the batch. So, let's look at... Um, what you do in EFT in order to get that batch in the first place. So you're in the, the EFT part of Donify. You're saying, right, I want all my standing orders for October 2019, preview batch, and it will create the batch for you once you've previewed it and hit the OK button. What that looks like, go into financial. This was the bit we just saw on the screenshot. So create a batch, standing orders, October preview, etc. And um, that will then create a batch which appears in there in batch transactions. So here's one I prepared earlier. Um, if the screen share is lagging behind my voice somewhat for you, uh, anyone who's watching this live on the webinar, um, apologies for that. I'll try and slow up a little bit to give it time to catch up. But um, hopefully you can now see in your list of batches a standing order batch that was created through EFT, and I'll open it up to display it. So you can see by opening this kind of batch, they look a bit different. They've got pretty colors on for a start, greens and reds. And what they mean is that they are batch detail lines when they're shown as red, not paid. They're kind of batch detail lines that it's inviting you to confirm as paid if they have been paid. So you would look through this with your bank statement in, in one hand and your mouse in the other hand and say, right, Andrew, Jason, we can see his reference on the bank statement, so we'll mark him as paid. Um, Jean Gray, we can see an entry on our bank statement with her reference, so we'll mark her as paid. So you're basically adding into a batch from the suggestions of the you know, what's expected every month 
in this particular batch. You can mark them all as paid if you're optimistic and you want to then just unmark the ones that weren't paid. Um, and you can also reconcile a file. So your bank may be able to provide you with a file which contains the reference, the amount, the date of the payment. So you can upload a file that contains that information. So you can drop it into this area here and it will say, OK, from that file, we can see that we've got Andrew Jason's, Jason Andrews, we've got Jim Arthur's money, and it will mark them as green for you based upon the file from the bank. It's doing all this within the context of, the, of, of batches. So it's holding this in a batch ready for us to post when the batch is finally correct. And obviously when we post, it's not going to create a transaction for those that weren't paid. It'll create transactions for those that were paid. But you can't do the other things in here. You can't create the gift aid declaration on the fly within this batch because you wouldn't know that. All you've got is a bank statement with, with money in it telling you that the money's been received. Um, so it just does transactions. At the top of the screen, you still get your control total sort of reconciliation. It's a bit different because you've got this not paid figure up here, which represents the, the two that haven't been paid but it just gives you a, a chance to uh, sort of reconcile against what you expected. But of course you do still get the, the post capability. So that's an EFT batch, bit of a, a sort of an outlier if it were, as it were, um, when talking mainly about batch entries, but it, it, it appears within the batching piece of Donify here, which is why we've mentioned it. So just to recap that, um, batch created by EFT appears in your list of batches, when you open it, it shows you the expected payments. You can mark them off manually by clicking on them, or you can import a file um, by uploading that file in the Upload button there. And that is basically an Excel file that you have received from your bank with the appropriate references and amounts in it to say we've got these ones or not. Okay. So in the end, when you look at someone's timeline, any transactions that have come into um, constituent timelines by any kind of batch, those with templates, those without templates, will appear in the timeline. Here we go, we've got our £15 donation in here now. And the way to identify the batch that a um, transaction was entered in, excuse my poor grammar, um, it's showing us here in the information banner of the transaction that this was entered into Deep Dive 127 as a batch number. So don't know if I give a sequential number to every batch as well, not just the description. Okay, so that's how you can see what a batch was in, or what was in a batch. You can also see the batch that a transaction was in from a transaction list. So if you wanted to produce a batch list, list of transactions in a certain batch, you can create a transaction list in the lists feature of Donify saying, I want everything where the batch number is 120 and the list of entries in batch 120 are shown below. You can also show the batch number in the column here as well. So if you wanted to output all transactions in September, um, you can output them all, but have the batch number in there, and then obviously use that in a spreadsheet or something if you want to download it to um, analyze batch totals in there. So batch reports can be produced by transaction lists there. You can also produce a batch report from within the batching system. So if I go back to financial and screen share here, now going into batch transactions on the left, I can open up a batch. Um, my checks batch and I can produce a report from this little black banner above the top of the batch here. I can download it or produce a report. So a couple of ways of getting information out. That little lot, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but here's a, a little table of the features of each kind of batch. So if you wanted to sort of work out what the best kind of approach for you is, then you can look through this table of features, say, right, we can use non-template batches or we need templates, we can use this. The recommendation really is to use templates because you can fine tune the way that your um, 
that your, your data entry works for you rather than using a standard batch. And then the EFT batches are shown on the right there as well. So this uh, presentation will be available as well in the Donify chat and um, various other places. So you feel free to look through this page at your leisure. A couple of final miscellaneous items. How can I produce a batch report? We just looked at that. Can you use the file uploader to import data into batches that you can then post? And the answer is no, you can't. <laughs> Um, you can import data directly into transactions, into activities, into constituents, but you can't import as yet into file uploaders. Um, don't have any specific plans to do that at the moment, but if that was of interest, uh, let us know. Um, is the batch number included in the accounts download? Um, the quick answer to that is it depends. Um, Sage download, no. Um, the QuickBooks one the same and zero, but for the transaction list, it is included. But you can also do an export from lists. So um, if you need your batch number in your accounting export, then it's not, uh, not a showstopper. Um, I think we covered this one off. If I change a default in the batch header, does it automatically change that field in all the details in the batch? No, it doesn't. So you'd have to go through each line and change them. And then if I change a template, do all batches based on that template change automatically? And you'd have to open the batches and then make the changes that you need and then save them. So um, finally, just getting on to whether um, you want to get started with, with BTE or not. Um, is it right for us is the first question you need to ask. And the answer to that may be that you, that, that the answer may be no. It may be that if you um, have predominantly automated methods of income, like standing, like not standing orders, um, direct debits through go cardless online um, donations just giving as you know with all the integrations in donify that money hits the timeline automatically you won't need to manually enter it in batches or anything like that so possibly not but many organizations still rely on lots of checks so it may be for you if you do if you don't have particularly high volumes it, you might not think it's worth the faff of of entering in batches um, because the, probably the benefits kick in when you're dealing with tens a day uh, in batches rather than a couple of checks a day, that kind of thing. If it is for you, um, I'd recommend you go back to the knowledge base and have a look at the two articles in there. Um, maybe watch this video again or look through the presentation. Create a batch template or two or three um, for the kinds of batches that you know you're going to want to use and try it out. Nothing to be lost by trying it out you can't do much harm other than perhaps um, entering a few transactions you shouldn't but you can always delete those if you want to and uh, you can give it a go there are of course alternatives so if you are an organization with um, lots of checks coming in all the time you may choose to outsource um, the whole process of banking and thanking so fulfillment agencies do exist to do that um, I know that, for example, St. Martin's in the field um, use an agency because they run the BBC Radio 4 Christmas Appeal every year and use Donify. They use an agency to process a lot of their income and it comes back in as a file that they import into Donify. So you could circumvent this whole topic if you wanted by using a fulfillment agency to help you there. Obviously, there are volumes that are expected probably as a baseline to doing that but uh, you can um, use that if you wish. If you want any help, just give us a shout. We'll put you in touch with a training consultant um, who can help you maybe through some of those discussions about what the right process for you is, you know, not just within Donify, but around Donify. And then we can um, you know, make sure that you're using Donify properly for that purpose. And uh, yeah. So that's that's it. So thanks very much for um, for listening. And uh, if you need help, just email us or go to support.donify.com and look forward to hearing from you.